Good evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery software line of G7 Solutions and Designs and Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration line includes My Block Piecer, My Quilt Embellisher, Perfect Embroidery Pro, Perfect Stitch Viewer, Word Art in Stitches, and My Quilt Planner. Tonight's webinar is Modify to Make It Modern. We have a wonderful team assisting us tonight. Inspiration Tech Support Team, Nancy R., Chris L., Tamara E., Dory N., and I would like to present you to our Inspiration Consultant, Catherine Artinis, our purveyor of PEP, the recycler of designs. Again, thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Dory. We are going to revisit Applique tonight because Dory and her help desk has seen a rise in questions about creating appliques and how to use a digital cutter to cut out the applique pieces. First, let's make sure everyone knows what we mean when we talk about machine embroidered applique design. It generally is a design with a large area. If we take a look at this finished heart here, sometimes too large to fill stitch, being covered with a piece of fabric, which is then trimmed to size and finished on the edge with some type of stitch. Let's just review the steps involved. We begin with the applique placement that stitches out on the focus fabric. We then lay a piece of prepared fabric on top of the placement stitches, the fabric large enough to cover the entire outline. Then we stitch out the tack down stitch, which adheres the fabric the applique fabric to the focus fabric. We remove the hoop from the machine and place it on a flat surface, trim very close to the tack down stitching line with a small curved scissors or applique scissors, and then we return the hoop to the machine, stitching out the finished outline stitch, which traditionally is a satin stitch. For a more contemporary look, a run or bean stitch can be used for a raw edge, and PEP also offers a blanket stitch and motif stitches. If there are any detailed stitches, we can add those last right on top of the fabric. So there is our steps reviewed. Let's go into PEP and take a look how very easy it is to create an applique with our built-in applique designs. We're going to click on the drop-down arrow for text and choose applique shapes. Here we have a long list of applique shapes that are already created for us. We're going to go back towards the top and start with this very pretty butterfly. We bring it to the screen and with those that double click, uh, this particular design is already set for an applique. It's that easy to use those designs that are built in. Now, we have a number of different properties that are applicable to an applique. And the first thing I want to show you is that if we do a slow redraw, you will see that by default, the placement line, the tack down line, and then the satin stitching, the finishing stitch, is all done in the same color. To me, I like to break those colors up. So I'll stop the slow redraw select the applique, bring back up the properties, and this particular option right here, the ability to change colors, I'll put a check mark in there and apply, and then if we go into slow redraw, we can see that it's changed the color of the tack down. And if I were to stitch that out, we see the blue placement and the yellow tack down, and then it's going to finish with our blue satin stitch. So I uh, always, choose that change colors when I'm working with an applique. We're going to take a look at some of the properties, uh, but we won't cover all of them. I already did that in a previous webinar, the 2000, uh, 2015 Applique Play is the webinar you might want to revisit if you need some additional information. Tonight we're going to pay more attention to what's important when we're working with our digital cutters. Just as a review though, we do have the ability to change the applique width, and that would be the width of the satin stitch. The stitch length is the um, stitch length for the tack down 
portion, and then we have inset and offsets that we want to talk about. Let's take a look first at this inset percentage. The default is 50. I'm going to zoom in quite close to this stitching so that you can see the pieces and parts that we're talking about. I'll get my select tool and the applique is selected. And by default, this comes in in blue and yellow. I'm going to make this a little easier for you to see. So if I right click on the number three for my aqua, it changes the tack down to the orange, the color that follows. So now I think you can see that a little easier. We talk about the inset, and this is the percentage of how much of the satin stitch will appear on the um, fabric of the applique and the focus fabric. I'm going to do one other thing that will make it easy for you to see. I'm going to go into our commands, come down to fabric, and use my ellipse button. It takes just a moment if I've not opened this fabric catalog yet in my session of the software, so it'll take just a moment to render, but once I do that, those will come up faster on the screen. And all of these fabric swatches are here. If any of you watched Tamara's webinar um, two weeks ago, she covered the fabric catalog and how to add swatches and so forth. Very wonderful. You might want to go back and take a look at that. We'll choose our pink because that will show very nicely. So now you understand when I'm talking about the applique fabric, it's pink and the focus fabric will say is white. We come back to the inset. If I drop that down to a 25% and apply, you'll see what happens is that the satin stitch actually moves so that more of the satin stitch is on the focus fabric and less of the satin stitch is here on the applique fabric. If I bump that up to a 75%, you'll see the opposite. More of the satin stitch is on the applique fabric with less of it being on the focus fabric. The reason we are given this option depends on the fabric that you are using for both your applique and your focus fabric. If by chance you have something with a heavier nap or uh, something that ravels easily, you might want more of the bite of the satin stitch on the applique fabric such as it is showing now. If you have your focus fabric being the thicker pile, you might want more of that bite on the focus fabric. So we have that option with this inset percentage. I'll go ahead and put it back to 50, which is the default. The next thing we want to take a look at is this placement line and tack down line and the offsets for both. By default, the placement line has an offset of 0%, meaning it's not going to be offset at all. It's going to be on the very edge of the shape of the applique. And in our case, you can see how far up that pink fabric goes. And this line right here is our placement line. The tack down line, however, has a default offset of 25%. And you can see that right here in the distance between the edge of the applique shape and how far over that tack down stitch has been moved so that it actually grabs the fabric. We'll take a look at a slide that I have for us and perhaps this will be uh, a little bit clearer for you to see. We have this is the first thing that we talked about with the inset. The lower the number, the more satin stitches lays on the focus fabric. The higher the number, the stitch lays on the applique fabric. And here we have the placement line and the tack down line. And I've showed you with this black arrow right here that we're talking about the distance between the placement and the tack down. And I want you to think of this logically. When we're saying that we're going to cut this fabric out ahead of time on our digital cutter. So this line shows us where we're going to place that piece of fabric, which is cut to the exact size as this blue. And then the red line is what's going to tack it down to your focus fabric. And there needs to be a distance in there. Otherwise, if you don't have an offset for your tack down, then it would have to stitch directly on the edge of your fabric. And that is giving you no fudge factor at all, no wiggle room at all. Um, so PEP does this for us. And this is one of the things that has PEP stand apart from other software or other um, applique uh, creation. 
because we have this offset by default. Let's go back into PEP, and that is that orange line that we're talking about. This is going to be important for us when we start working with our digital cutter. But first, we are reviewing what we can do to create our appliques ourselves, because that was part of the question that Dory keeps asks, uh, receiving on the help desk. So this was the easy way. We went right into our applique shapes and chose one of those that are offered to us. Let's try a different way. Clean screen, and this time we're going to go into our backdrop tool. You may remember from our um, webinars on art that we have two types of artwork. We have raster and vector, and working with our backdrop tool, that's going to give us our raster artwork. Here we have an Easter Bunny that's a PNG format. Let's go ahead and double click and bring him to screen. Something else you may remember is that when we work with the backdrop tool, this really is, uh, the way I like to say it, is behind the glass. It's there for us to trace. There's a couple different ways you could go about doing this, but I'm going to use this way uh, that I show you because this is a good piece of artwork. Again, we went over this in the um, previous webinar, the February webinar was on the shape tool. We actually used this little guy and I showed you right on that webinar where to go to get this public domain uh, free artwork. So you might want to review that if you need to. We're going to come up and choose the artwork tool, drop down arrow and choose our pen. You'll notice that the magic wand is no longer grayed out, so if I want to, I can use it. We'll go ahead and click it to activate it. You see now that it is activated. And I'm going to bring that magic wand and anywhere within this drawing, not on the line, but I'm going to click within, and I'll do a click within, and it's already happened. Let's get our select key and move that over just a little bit so that you can see, indeed, what has happened here. And I like to change mine to red. I don't know why. It's easier for me to see than the blue. We know that we want to turn this artwork into a, an applique. So as I'm looking at these ear lines right in here, I want to fix that. I've got a little dip here that won't be appropriate for our applique. And also, I want to take care of the tail. So at this point, we're going to go back to our shape tool. Again, that's what we played with last webinar. Let's do a zoom to come up a little closer. And I'm going to choose that shape tool. And what I'm going to do here is simply select all of those points that fall below the ears, hit the delete on my keyboard, and I've taken care of that dip. I'm also going to take some of these points out as well because I'm going to bring that down. Oops, got my handle instead. I'm going to right click on that and make it a line. Right click on that and make it a line so that those are straighter. Maybe bring that over a little bit. And should I want to, again, reviewing from last month's webinar, I can go in and delete some of the points that might be a little jagged. I can add a point if I'd like. And certainly, you might want to take a look at that uh, February webinar. I would do the same here and clean up anything that I thought I would need to. I can take as much time to shape this artwork as I'd like. And then I know that I need to get rid of these small little points. They're not appropriate for an applique, so I'll delete those. Let's zoom back out and take a look. I'm going to just be happy with the rest of the points that are on there. But the other thing that I want to do is to remove this portion, the tail portion of the bunny, so that I could maybe put buttons or beads or something fun to represent his tail. If I come over and click on my plus sign in sequence view, I see that that artwork is one piece. I need to come up here to my break apart tool so that I break apart that artwork, I now can select the tail and delete it using the keyboard delete, and there is my artwork for my bunny. Remember, we started with our backdrop tool, we brought in a PNG file, which is a raster artwork, and we simply did a little bit of cleanup. This is still artwork. How very easy it is to do a right click, convert to, applique, and there's my bunny from artwork to an applique design. Very easy to do.
We're going to bump it up just a little bit here. We'll go into a new screen, and the other way that we bring artwork in is a file, import artwork, and this is where we go get our vector images. Now we have to follow the path. So we use our drop-down arrow when we start at C drive. I come down to find my dime folder, alphabetical order, double-click on dime, I find my images, double-click on images, and here are my bitmaps. I double-click on bitmaps, and here is that long list of vector images that come to you free with Perfect Embroidery Pro. The one that I know I want to play with this evening is the bear. Here he is up here in our preview window. We can take a look. I'm going to open him. He comes on my screen, and what we have to remember here is he is artwork. I'm going to scoot over a bit so you can see what we're going to play with. Nine times out of ten, the first black object in our sequence view is going to be the outline of that artwork. So I'll click and drag it over, and I see that it is a solid artwork. If I come over to Sequence View and I click on Expand and I choose Artwork, I see that I have two pieces here, so I can select the first one and I'll simply drag that over to the side. If you're not sure, you can do all of this kind of thing until you're happy with the piece you have. I see that we're given both an outline and a filled artwork. I'll delete the filled and we will play now with our outline of our bear. Remember, this is now artwork. All I need to do is a right-click, convert to, applique. It's very, very easy to do, but I see as I'm waiting that I might have a little bit of an issue right up here with his hair because that was thin. Turn on my 3D, and let's zoom in there for us to take a uh, care of this situation. Because of the width of the satin stitch, I've got some that are uh, turning back and stitching on itself, which is no problem. I simply go into my shape key and I select the pieces and parts that I no longer want, hit the delete on my keyboard, and then I can go in and add a point, drag that point up, maybe give it just a little bit of attitude, maybe that's too much. Uh, drag these guys over a little bit here, and then simply apply, and I still have some hair, and I could play with that however much I wanted to, but I'll take care of that um, stitching going back onto itself. So once again, we could play with any part of that design that I want to or feel that I need to, and I'll bring that back so that I'm working with my bear. Now, remember this is an applique, and to help you remember that, I'm going to go back into my commands and find some fabric to put in our bear so that it's a little easier for you to remember that this is applique. We could be finished here. I could just find some fun fabric for my applique and maybe add some buttons for his belly and eyes and whatnot, and it would be adorable. But we can take this a step further since we have all of this artwork left. I'm going to come over to my sequence view and select all of the brown pieces, color number seven. So I'm going to go in and find all of those and hit my delete key on the keyboard so that I'm left with just some pieces and parts that I might want to use. At this point, I can now drag the pink portion of the ear over and drop it on my applique, sort of get that where I want. I'll do a control select, right click, convert to satin. Then I might want to play with this face, so I'll go ahead and drag that over here. Now I, I put it here for a reason. I'm going to take this white area, you see that little shading on the nose, and I come over here to Sequence View, and I see that that is two parts. So I'm going to select both of those parts and drag that down because I'm going to select the face, right-click on my red, click it and drag it where I want to, right-click, convert to complex fill. I'll leave that as a standard, and then I can take my shadow. I'm going to come up here and group that so that the outline and the 
inside stay together and I can place that right on the nose and right click on that convert to maybe a satin and I have cute additions to my applique again we could stop there or if I'd like I can drag the tummy part and I see that this center part is solid this is the outline it's kind of fun it gives me two options I could do a right click convert to complex fill come over here to my fill type choose a motif come down here many to choose from apply that and that could give him a real cute belly let me go ahead and right click create the border for that I would select both of those pieces come over here to group and then I'm going to change the color so that I don't get it all mixed up with my black and I could drop that on the applique and that would stitch looking like that my other option would be to select both of those pieces I'm going to come over here and combine them and then do a right click convert to complex fill I'm going to change the color again I like to do that while I'm building something so it's easy for me to find it in the sequence view and I look at the outline and I look at the inside and I think that I'm going to play with this outline instead of that fill stitch the last thing I want to do I like these demarcations for the paws of the bear to separate the paw from the leg so let's go a little closer and we can select just this portion that I want I'm going to turn on my shape key I am not daunted at all with all of those points I simply come down here right click and do a split line we did that last month a right click split line it isolates this portion so now I want to select this portion and drag it away from the rest of it and while I have it here I'm going to change the color right click on purple right click convert to complex fill and then I could have made it a satin whatever I wanted to do there but now I can drag it and position it and I then want to copy paste and I also want to do a flip horizontal I'm going to drag it over into the position on the other side and then I will copy paste that one and drag it down select this again copy paste drag that down and there's my bear we have taken a plain applique using the other artwork that came with the bear and we've added some personality to our applique so let's go ahead and select the remainder of that artwork and delete it and then I'll come up here and select my entire bear right click on my ruler come down to center origin and we take a look at this and at this point I would probably do my file save as but there is one last situation that we need to address let me zoom in for you and you can see what it is when we created all of those purple pieces we created those last and you see that the purple is going to stitch out on the satin stitch and in reality we need this satin stitch to be the last thing that stitches out so what we do in that case please take a look over here at the sequence view and notice that the applique is all of those three pieces remember it's the placement line the tack down line and the satin stitch so once I have everything the way I want it to be I've made changes and everything and take a look I forgot to do my change color so I just click in that and apply and now my applique is exactly as I'd like it to be the very last thing I need to do is a right click and it's right here break up path this is the key what that does is it separates all three parts of your applique so that the tack down or the placement is one position the tack down is another and finally the satin stitch and if I were to turn my eyeballs off on those to hide them you see that there is the placement and then the tack down is the pink and then it would be the satin that it's the black I need to have those separated so that I can choose just the satin stitch come up here 
and use my move to front, which means it's going to stitch out last. Let me go in and turn off that fabric because it looks like everything, all of our hard work is gone, but really it's just the fabric showing on top for that applique. And here's my little guy with all of the attitude that we've added with the additional steps and so forth. And if I were to select and position my purple, they now are going to stitch out before my black satin stitch. And that's exactly what we needed to do. So I can drag those up over and drop them down a little bit. So here's my fun bear, our applique, very easy. And then we've added a little bit of detail to that bear. Dory, we'll stop right here and ask, are there any questions at this point? We have one very interesting question. And that is our friend Janice would like to know why you would use, why do you want to use the split line over um, a slice? Or what is the difference between a split line and a slice? We, uh, and I would um, suggest to Janice, just as an aside, we did play with that in our last, in our February webinar. But when you're talking about a split line or a slice, remember, a slice does not work. If I were to go in and draw some rectangles, and here I have one that's artwork, and I'll just do another and change that one to red, and uh, right-click, convert to complex fill. This is artwork, and if I change that, convert to a run. This one, you notice the slice tool is not available on a run or a steel. If I select my complex fill, I'm allowed to use the slice. If I have plain artwork, and I have that under my shape tool, you see when I do a right click, I have the split line available. I have it on a run. If I choose my shape tool on my run and right click, I can do a split line. And also on my complex fill, if we choose it, I do not have a split line. So the difference between the two tools is based on the object that you are working with. The slice is for complex fill. The split line is for run or steel and artwork. Excellent. Thank you very much. Very welcome. Okay. And you have already pointed out that we can add fabrics to our fabric stash so that we can we have can. And We can. And you that, could put... Again, Tamara, oh, I'm sorry, Dory. Tamara covered all of that in her March webinar. Um, and even though you might not do the quilting part of the software, um, I would still recommend you taking a, a look at that webinar because it does explain how to add fabrics to your stash. Super. Thank you very much. Very welcome. All right. We move then to something else that we've also done before, and that's called split applique. And once again, I'm doing a review of these appliques that we have done before all with the idea that we're going to end up working with them on our digital cutter. So this is what we mean by a split applique, where you can divide the applique into two pieces, and if you'd like, add text between. Here's another example of a split applique. So let's take a look and see how to do that. We're going to bring up a clean screen, and once again, I'm going to go under that text design drop-down arrow into applique shapes. And if you've joined me before, you know, you know that I very much like this little t-shirt down here. So we'll double click and put that on our screen. Click on our 3D, and here is our applique. I'm going to come over, click and change colors, and apply. Now, we need to split this applique into two pieces. And one of the tools that I love, I use it very, very often, is the guidelines. We can go up in this ruler, and I simply click within that ruler and drag that guideline straight down. And what this does for me, it gives me a horizontal line that I can break this applique into even positions based on this horizontal line. And what I did there is to make sure that I cleared the sleeve and all of the underarm angles and so forth. So here is my guideline. It certainly does not stitch, and it doesn't print. 
But I'm, now I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see what we're doing. Once again, I'll go get my shape tool. And here, we're going to use that tool again. Right click, split line. And we just talked about that. A right click and a split line. And what has happened, if I zoom back out, you see that the lower portion of this design is now one piece. I see a start and stop button of its own. I will select that. Certainly we could drag that down, but I'm going to be very careful to move that lower part of the shirt directly down from its original position, and I'm going to do that by using my control down arrow key. And as I hit the arrow, you can see that it's moving. But it's meant to move at very small intervals. So I can also do my shift control down arrow, and you see that it moves in bigger increments. And I know I want a sort of a big space in there to add a word. I'll zoom in so I can see both. And this is uh, another thing that I think is very wonderful about PEP. This is two separate pieces of applique. It has an opening right here. If I click on my shape tool and right click and ask it to close that line, it does that for me. I come over here to apply and it makes it an applique. It knows to add that line on all three pieces. We'll try it again. Select the portion. I have my shape tool selected, a right click, close up that line, come over here to apply so that I can see it um, as a separate applique piece. So those two pieces are separate and will stitch out separately and so forth. And then I'm free to go ahead and add whatever it is that I might want to add to that t-shirt any font that I want to play with, and once I have the word up there, I can go ahead and size it and drag and drop it into position. And if we go back to our slide, you see that I've also added a fish. I put in some fabric so that you can see the look. This fish is free to you under your text designs. And then I added just a little hashtag uh, to make it current. And we can add text and so forth to the applique to make it fun. If you look at this one, this is a cat, and you might want to play with this um, at your leisure here, uh, adding some words. And the only thing that's different about that is to add those little eyeballs. And I'll show you where we got all of that from as well. So we'll clean screen. We went under Applique Shapes again. It is a Halloween cat. So alphabetically, it's Halloween. Bring it to screen. We would do our guideline. We would do the split lines and so forth. Everything that we just did for our t-shirt. And then if you want to add those eyes, I'm up here under symbol. Use the drop down select. And we simply scroll down alphabetically. There's our eyeball. And we add it to screen. We click and drag to the size that we want. And then I would select it, copy paste it, and I would if you see here, they're both going in the same direction, so I would do a horizontal flip, and there's my two eyes that I would place on my cat face. So that's another one that you can play with at your leisure. Now we want to talk about the digital cutter and how to go about bringing the artwork we need to the digital cutter. I'm going to give a little disclaimer here. As much as we love you, we cannot become your help desk for your specific digital cutters. You'll need to take what we learned here this evening and apply it to your specific cutter. You might want to post questions on the community, which is our forum where we share knowledge and help each other, and that might be a good place if you have specific questions about your cutter. I have a Silhouette Cameo with the Silhouette Studio Designer Edition Software Version 3. Um, so that's what I will be showing you tonight, but they are very similar, and um, the idea behind each of them is that we need to be able to isolate the artwork. I'm going to come back to our original butterfly, and what I'm going to do here is go back into our fabric, use my drop-down arrow, and say none. Okay, But we know that that's a piece of applique. And once again, before we go forward, Everything about these properties needs to be 
as you want it. If you want it to rotate your design, if you size your design, anything that you want to do this applique, you need to get to the point where you are happy with it before we do the next step. And that is to once again do a right click and we need to break up that path, what we just did with our teddy bear. So once again, we'll do a break up path. And as we look over here in sequence view, we see that we have the first placement, which is a run stitch. The second is our tack down. And then the third is our satin applique. When we are talking about digital cutters, it is this placement that is the piece that we need. If you remember, the placement is the actual size of your design. We're going to do a, it is selected right over here in your sequence view. We're going to do a copy. So I'm going to come up here on my toolbar and do a copy, clean screen, paste. And on my screen is just the run stitch, the placement stitch for our applique. The next step is to do a right click, convert to artwork. It needs to be artwork. And now it needs to be in the format that can be used by your digital cutter. So in this case, we're going to do a file, export artwork. The first thing is we need to see where it's going. Well, I certainly don't want it back in my bitmaps folder. So let me go back to my hard drive C and I use my formula for a zero space to isolate the folder that I want. Keeps it up top easily. I'm going to head, go ahead and click on that folder and I'm going to come down here because this is the other part that's important. Do you see that by default it's going to give us this file as an SVG, a scalable vector graphic. And if you need to, if you have a brother scan and cut, you can use the drop down. And depending on your other, uh, those of you that have other digital cutters, here are the formats that it will save your design. These are all vector formats. So I'm going to leave it as the SVG. I'm going to type in, and actually, I, I always call it artwork. And because you see I played with this, I'm going to name it number three. And we'll go ahead and save it. And then, I already have my software open for my Silhouette Cameo. So you would go into your software uh, or use go into on the uh, earlier scan and cut if you go right in on the screen itself. But all I need to do here is a file open. I'm in the folder that has my file. I'm going to scroll down and I find my butterfly artwork number three. I bring it to screen, takes a moment to load, and here is that butterfly. This is the shape of that applique that we created in PEP. So let's select this and notice that my size is 3.88 and a 3.9. We'll go back into PEP, back into our butterfly, and if I look at my sizes, I have a 3.9 and a 3.8, which is the same size that has come into my silhouette. Okay, we're going to do that again. We're going to isolate our artwork. We'll come up with a clean screen and we'll go into our applique shapes again. Let's use our dog bones, bring that to screen. It is an applique. The first thing I'm going to do is change the color and apply it. I have the size and the shape and everything else about this applique the way I want. I'll do a right click, break up path. I come over here and I select the first item, which is the placement line in the three steps. Come up to my copy, move to a clean screen, do a paste. It is my placement line that is a run stitch. So I want to right click, convert to artwork, file, export artwork. I'm in the folder where I want to be. I'm going to leave it in SVG. I'm going to call it dog bones artwork. Save it. 
if I'm in my digital cutter software and I do a file open, I look for my dog bones. Here it is, double click. It's going to bring it up on a clean screen. And again, that's my shape in my digital cutter. If I select it again, I have a 3.06 by 3.9 back in PEP. 3.9, 3.07. So the sizes are what we need. One of the beauties about PEP is this ability to isolate the placement line and turn it into artwork. If you do your own research online, you'll see a lot of people talking about having to uh, do an offset here and an offset there and an offset in their uh, software for their digital cutter. We do not have to do that. The placement line is the exact size that we need. Let's take a moment and look at some slides that I prepared so you understand what we're doing. Once again, this is the traditional way where our fabric is there and we have to trim around the tack down. But here in a digital cutter, here is my prepared white fabric that I have on my mat and I've used a brayer to get all the air holes out of it and so forth. And then I run through the digital cutter. Here are the pieces that are cut. We would take those pieces and at the embroidery machine, that is our placement line that first stitches out. We take that pre-cut piece, lay it right on top of that placement line. I do fusible with mine, so I do a little heat right there. And then the next step is the tack down. And do you see how that tack down is offset from the edge of the fabric so that I definitely get that fabric sewn down? And if I zoom in just a little bit so that you can see it, do you see better how the blue is the tack down? Now, I happen to use blue as the placement so you all could see it easily on the fabric. I certainly would use the placement thread to match whatever fabric I have for focus fabric. But I did it so that you could see um, what it actually looks like. All right, as I move forward, then I would take it, and the final would be the satin stitch. And I wanted to show you, take just a moment to show you what I've done here. I've actually created for myself a testing board. And I do this often if I'm learning a new technique or I want to see how things work. Uh, I am getting a little older, so my memory is not as it used to be. But here I have different settings. And in the software, you may remember that we can add notes on our screen, which will print. So I have printed, in essence, the template with all of the information reminding me that the width of this uh, satin stitch, the density, and you can see that these top rows, I've used the default of 3.5 width and a 4 density. Here in the red, I've changed it to 3 density. All of the first column over here is 4 density, and the uh, right column is a 0.3 density. So I've made notes um, on the screen and then printed that out and glued it to the back so I always have it. And what I was showing myself is the different widths and some of the different corners that I can have. I've also done it with circles. And um, here, another board, and that there are all my measurements. I was playing with the um, tack down offsets, again, with the density and width, and I can have that as a reference always. And if you take a look at it up close, this is the red one, which is this one right here, and that is the full 3.5 wide, and the uh, offsets for the placement and tack down, and then that's what it looks like up close. So that's just something that I do for myself. When we talk about um, our preparation of fabric. What I did to prepare myself for this class and to get a better understanding of my digital cutter, I created um, a sample file where I wanted to use appliques. This is what the sample file looked like in the software. And I came back and I tried to keep the same color coding. And what I found in my research is that there are many, many viewpoints on how to prepare your fabric for your digital cutter. I took all of the different ideas I found and I tried them all. Freezer paper and basting glue, heat and bond light fusible, material magic, liquid starch, combinations of both, uh, leaving the uh, fusible backing paper on, taking it off, and I played with all of them 
made notes for myself and went through and created this and came up with what I happen to like is the heat and bob light with the paper uh, fused to the back, completely cooled, removed the paper, and I put the actual fusible to the mat. And then in my um, Silhouette software, I slow down the speed for the cutter, and I also went level one level deeper with the blade than was indicated for fabric only. So truly, I would suggest that you do your own testing to find out what works for you all. Dory, we'll stop there and see if we have any questions at this point. I have a couple other things to play with. Yes. The, I have a quickie for you from Sheila, and she wants to know, hey, Catherine, what is a brayer? Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll go back to that. And actually, this is a uh, not a true brayer, but this little plastic piece came with my machine and it's um, if you envision this being stiff like a credit card and you run that uh, across it you might have a tool similar to that if you put up wallpaper a true brayer would have this on a roller it would be a round um, heavy plastic with a handle uh, very much like a paint roller but instead of having the hairy um, roller itself it's made out of plastic and it's meant you also have brayers for wallpaper it's meant to get air bubbles and things like that out of um, in this case fabric I'm adhering that fabric to the sticky mat or in the case of wallpaper where you have put the wallpaper up on the wall and it's still wet and you run your brayer over that to get out your air pockets Who knew that we needed another tool, huh? <laughs> I think that's great. I really like your little iron. That makes it so much easier to do it in the hoop. It does. And I always put something under my hoop. Um, I have a little mat that I use if I'm going to use an iron while the hoop is still attached to my machine. Some people do. Some people don't. Up to you. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll cover um, this last area. And I'm going to cover this because this is something, as I was doing all of my research, and yes, they're being stitched down with a satin stitch, I love raw edge applique. So I wanted to learn how to cut out my pieces on my digital cutter and still give me this look of a raw edge applique. Traditionally, you know that we would... Um, stitch down and what a raw edge normally does it does not have the satin stitch it generally has a bean or a motif stitch some kind of decorative stitch right there but the difference is is this edge is not encased in the satin stitch and it's left raw edge when you cut this um, away from your stabilizer you can control how far away that you cut the edge from the bean stitch. And you can see it right here on the top of the pumpkin as well, that I've left area between the bean stitch and the edge of the fabric. And you do that on purpose. With raw edge, very often you want to showcase the stitching. And if you cut very close to that stitching, you're not going to see the stitching very well. So that's the difference between raw edge and a traditional. But in doing so, what I need to do here is remember this outside edge is the placement. That is the true size of the applique. So what I would need to do then is go back in and play with that tack down offset. And once again, the beauty of PEP, it allows me to do that very easily. So let's go back into PEP. We'll come into a clean screen and once again, I'll just go get my t-shirt that I know I love and besides that's what my sample is so I'll go ahead and double click there for you and we bring it to screen here's my t-shirt and I'm going to do any of the changing of properties in this case I want to change the colors and now it is this tack down offset that I want so once again let me zoom in very closely for you so you can see what I'm going to be doing here and again, so that you can see a little easier, let me change the color. Remember this orange right here represents the tack down and by default, it's set at 25%. I want to increase that. So I can go anywhere up to 
um, to increase my tack down. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and do a 75%. And where that looks odd, because the tack down stitch is way inside my satin, I don't care because I'm not going to use the satin. So now that I have all my properties set, change colors, tack down offset, now I go back and do that right click, break up path, so that I can isolate my placement for the artwork, but I also can isolate that satin stitch and delete it because in a raw edge, we don't use the satin stitch. At this point, I would go forward. Let's do it one more time so you're comfortable. I would choose the placement stitch, copy, new screen, paste, right click, convert to artwork, file, export artwork, and I would call it t-shirt, and I'll just call this raw app artwork. It is a SVG format. I would save it, and then it would be ready for me to go to my Silhouette software and bring it in as we did with the dog bones and the butterfly. What that does for me is it gives me this raw edge look, and I actually have this t-shirt done. If I zoom in just a little bit, do you see here that here's the traditional satin stitch, and here I've done it with the raw edge, and you can see the distance right here. You can see it better down here at the bottom. The distance of that percentage offset that I have left myself fabric, and then there is my bean stitch that is showcased. And once again, you can see that purple of the placement, but I did that on purpose so that you all could see it. This is another one of my test boards, and I've done all of that printing to remind myself what I actually did here in both of these. So if I get down the road and I forget, I've got that information on the back of my board. So this is a raw edge. Um, there is one last thing that I want to bring up to you and show you and sort of challenge you to do this. Here is a design. I don't know if any of you with your digital cutters take a look at YouTube or if you have uh, subscribed to any blogs or so forth. The one I like is Silhouette School. She's very creative. And here is one that she had on a onesie. It's a heat transfer design. And I looked at that knowing that I was preparing for an applique class for you all. And I loved the way that this is done in all of this circular. This is really similar to our split applique. So the difference is, how do I get that to be curlicued, sort of like our font? So I studied that, and here is what I came up with. This is a stitch out of the design. And I'd like to run through that procedure with you. It is a very apropos to what we're doing this evening. Again, I'm going to go into my applique shapes. And luckily, we have a shamrock. Although you have to stitch this up pretty quick. You have two days until St. Patty's Day. We'll go ahead and I'm going to right click, convert this to a complex fill. And I'll turn it green by right clicking on my green and put on my 3D. And here is my design. Let's scoot over just a little bit. And now we're going to go for text. I'll click on my screen. I'm going to type in that phrase, Mick Cutie, which I thought was very cute. I'll go get my font that I want. And in this case, I instead of using the built-ins, I went ahead and went under my true types, knowing that I wanted my Arial rounded. So all I have to do is scoot up to find it. Here it is. And I'm going to apply. Comes up on the screen. Let me zoom out for us. And I'm going to now size it smaller, drag it over into position right on top of my shamrock. I'm going to angle it just a little bit. And I want a lot of the word going right across that um, filled shamrock. And now here's part of the trick. Let's do a right click, create outline. I'm going to bump that up to a 0.1 and OK it. There's our outline behind our word. I'll go ahead and do change that color so we can see it. 
So the trick first is to create the outline and then right click and convert that outline to be a complex fill. And you see that it covers up our text. Not a problem. Let's just come over here. I'm going to select the text, the blue text, come up here to my move, and I want to move it to front so that it stitches out last. Now, the blue text is selected, and I need the outline to be selected. And here's the other part of this trick. With the outline selected, do a right click, remove overlap, and then the orange is still selected. I'm actually going to dra drag it out of your way so you can see it. And do you notice that it took the outline shape of our orange and it removed all of the overlaps that are we're in? I'll go ahead and delete the orange, change that uh, text to gold to be more in keeping with St. Patty's Day. And here we have duplicated that look. And then finally, I'll go ahead and select the green. It is already a complex fill. Come on over here, and instead of standard, I went with shape. I left the zero, but I bumped up the density to a five or a six and apply, and I get that look of the circles. I did a right click, create the border to finish it off, and this is how I went about being inspired by what is done on a digital cutter with a heat transfer and so forth, and how do I get that look in our software and I say we did a pretty good job getting that look. So it's just very fun, the types of things that you can do. And truly how very easy it is with PEP to combine your applique designs and prepare them and isolate that artwork and so forth that you need to bring it over to your digital cutter. Dory, do we have any final questions? Yeah, we have just one final question from our little buddy, Chris. She wants to know, can you use a decorative stitch instead of the bean stitch that you used initially when you were doing the um, raw edge? Absolutely. Let's go back and find that t-shirt that I played with here. Remember, the orange is representing that straight bean stitch. If I select it right here, uh, I have my two ply, and in that case, I would simply use the drop down arrow, go into motif, go in here to the melange of lovely options that we have, and we could find something that was fun and apply it. That one's a little large, so let's go ahead and bump that down to maybe a two, see if that's better. That looks better, I think. So the answer to that is yes, we can add any kind of motif stitch, all of these choices that we have are at your fingers. It was my aim to have you all more comfortable with working with appliques and how to isolate the artwork needed for your digital cutter and Perfect Embroidery Pro just makes it so darn easy to do that. So I thank you all.